Okay, hello everyone. I'm James Hart and welcome to this Orbex Trader Education session where we're going to be looking at an area of technical analysis which for a lot of people can be their favorite subject and is one of the first areas of technical analysis that really starts to make sense and get them excited about analyzing the chart. And that is, of course, using trend lines. Now, trend lines are an incredibly interesting subject, I guess because it almost feels a little creative and because when you're finding a good trend line, when you're, you're looking through the charts and you come across one and you establish one and it works really well, there's a very satisfying feeling knowing that you have identified an area on the chart to trade. And so that's exactly what you're going to learn to do in the course of this session is identify and trade using trend lines. So what are trend lines then? Basically, trend lines help us identify uh, the trend direction on the charts, the movement of price hence they're very appropriately named. And remember that whenever we're looking to trade, we're typically always looking to trade in the direction of the trends. This is always the safest and most rewarding way to trade is using the, the trend in our favor. So essentially what we're looking to do with trend lines is to connect highs and lows to identify the trend. So we're looking to connect rising lows to identify a bullish trend line and we're looking to connect um, falling highs to identify a bearish trend line. Now, alongside um, identifying the trend direction, trend lines also act as support and resistance in the market. And so they can be really useful in helping us to identify good locations to execute trades. So let's take a look then at how we identify trend lines and talk about some of the key criteria. And then we'll move on to talking about how we can actually trade them. OK, so here you can see we've got a bullish trend line. You can see this upward gradient sloping higher and you can see that we're connecting these rising lows. OK, so if you look at this example, then you can see that we start by um, identifying a low point to initiate our trend line with. And we then look to connect it to a second point on the chart. So because this is a bullish trend line, we're looking to find rising lows. OK, so what we're looking for is price to move higher and then to retrace lower and put in a swing point and then move higher again. And so once we've connected these two lows with our diagonal line, we then have our trend line in place. And essentially what we can look to do is monitor price as it tests the trend line on further occasions. And this can therefore be used to help us identify the direction that price is moving in and also help us to come up with trading ideas. OK, so on a very basic level, if we ever open a chart and we're looking to establish the direction of price to help us to ascertain in which direction we should be trading, one of the most basic things that we can do is look to apply a trend line. And so, as I say, when we're applying trend lines, what we're looking to do is connect rising lows to establish a bullish trend line like we've got here or connect falling highs to establish a bearish trend line. Now, the thing about trend lines is, as someone has just mentioned in the comments, they are, of course, subjective. OK, you can um, line up different points on the chart. And so one of the key things that you need to remember with trend lines is that you have to update them. OK, so it's, for example, we could have started out with a trend line like this, where we connect these two lows and the trend line would go off in this direction. However, we wouldn't have accounted for any of this price action here. And so what you should always be looking to do is adjust your trend lines and augment them as the price action develops to keep them relevant. And so what you might end up with is a series of trend lines on your chart. So you might have a wider trend line here and then a tighter trend line here. Now, all of these trend lines are valid. So whenever you can connect these different price points, you have a valid trend line. So as I say, it really is a question of monitoring the markets and making sure that you're adjusting your trend lines to attract price action as it develops and make sure that you have useful trend lines in play. So that's how you establish a bullish trend line. Simply very, very simple. You're just connecting rising lows. And then in terms of how we can use trend lines to trade, you might have guessed it by now. But the first way is to simply look to use bullish trend lines as support to set long trades against. OK, so as I say, once we've connected two price points, we have our trend line in play. And then we can then simply monitor price action. And then every subsequent time that it tests the trend line, this can be an opportunity to set a buy trade in line with the bullish trend, which we've identified through applying our trend line. 
So this is a really simple but effective way of identifying support in the market and ensuring that we're trading in the direction of the trend. So as I say, once again, once you've connected two low points, two rising lows, you have a trend line in place. You can then look to trade price as it tests the trend line again. So if you look at what happens here, then we've identified our two swing points. We've got our trend line in play. The market is moving in a bullish trend. So we push higher, move up to new highs. We then reverse, retrace lower and trade down. We test the trend line. And as we talked about a minute ago, you can see the trend line acts as support. So if we're in the market at this point in time here where price is trading higher, it's simply a question for us of monitoring price action and waiting for it to come back down and test the trend line. And as it tests the trend line, as I say, we can then use the trend line as support to initiate a buy trade looking for price to continue within the bullish trend. So this is a really basic, simple, but effective way of analyzing the market, making trading ideas and establishing key trading locations. So that's how we establish a bullish trend line then. And identifying a bearish trend line is simply the reverse. So with a bearish trend line, what we're looking to do is um, connect falling high points. OK, so we're looking to connect lower highs. So if we look at this price action here, you can see we started at the high point here. We sold off, put in the low, we then traded back up, traded up to this point here and put in our lower high. So once the market had sold off from that swing point and we know that we've got that swing point in play. OK, so you can see we've got that classic bearish trend movement of a lower low, a lower high and a lower low. Once we can identify that, it's simply a question of connecting these two swing points with our um, diagonal trend line. And then again, we're just monitoring price to see what happens when it trades back up to the trend line. And the difference here simply is that instead of buying, as we were doing with a bullish trend line, we're simply looking to sell. OK, so this time around, the trend line is acting as resistance in the market. OK, so we know that sellers are active in the market. We know we have a bearish trend in play and we can see that along this gradient, sellers are using this as a tool to step in. OK, so the trajectory of the market and the gradient of these retracements is suggesting to us that as price trades back up and retests that trend line, there's a good chance that it's going to act as resistance and that we're going to see sellers stepping back in. So once again, it's simply the opposite to what we were seeing with the bullish trend line. And instead of looking to buy, we can look to use this trend line as an area to sell. So as you can see, even just from this basic introduction, then trend lines can be an incredibly useful tool in your trading to help you analyze the charts, to help you identify trend direction and also to help you find good locations to set trades. So the best advice really for getting started with trend lines then is to simply spend some time looking through your charts, identifying different trend lines and sort of keeping a journal as you go along. OK, so as you go along, what you should be doing is noting down where you expect the market to react from these different trend lines and then note the reactions as it happens. And so what you'll essentially build over time is a journal of your forecasting ability through using trend lines. You'll start to understand if the trend lines you're highlighting are correct and if the reactions that you're seeing from these trend lines are exploitable, e.g., is the reaction that you're seeing from these trend lines worthy of you making a trade based on identifying them? So that's really the best way to move forward with trend lines. Once you've got a basic understanding of how to identify them on the charts is to spend some time looking through the charts, identifying these trend lines, tracking down, forecasting rather, where you think the market is going to react and how, and then tracking what the market actually does. And this will really drastically improve your ability to identify trend lines and to trade them. Now, when it comes to actually placing the trade then with trend lines, we have two options. So the first is the more aggressive approach whereby we simply place a trade as price touches the trend line. Now, the benefit of this is that you get the best entry on the trade. OK, so you get in uh, as quickly as possible. Again, as quickly as possible uh, with the uh, with the reversal. However, one second, let me just pause this for one second. Someone's having an issue with the sound. Just give me uh, one second here. 
Brilliant. OK, so as I say, then you have two options. The first set, the first option is simply for you to trade the test of the trend line. So as the market trades up to the trend line, you simply anticipate that this is where price is going to reverse and you enter your position at the trend line. Now, the benefit of this is, of course, that you get the best possible entry on this trade. You're entering at the trend line. So if the reversal does occur, you got in at the best point. However, this is a very aggressive approach. And the risk is that the market isn't going to respect the trend line and it's simply going to blow through. And of course, you have no way of knowing this ahead of time. OK, so you don't know that the trend line is going to hold for definite. And so if you're simply entering at the trend line blindly, then you're exposing yourself to unnecessary risk. Now, the more strategic, slightly more conservative approach is to wait for price action confirmation. So this is where you wait to see how price reacts when it tests the trend line and you wait to identify reversal candles that you can use as a basis for entry. So let's focus then on how price reacts as it tests this trend line to explain this more clearly. So you can see that price trades all the way up to this trend line We have this big bullish candle here. We trade up, hit the trend line, pierce it slightly. But then you can see we get this big reaction lower. So this tells us that sellers have stepped in at the trend line. OK, price has tested the trend line and sellers have driven it back down. Now, this isn't a reversal candle yet, but it is indicative of sellers being active in the market at this point. And then you can see over the next two candles, we then don't get any bearish candles. We get three bullish candles in a row and we trade back up to test the trend line a further time. However, at this point, we get something interesting happening. So first of all, we get our first bearish candle. So we get the first candle where sellers have overwhelmed buyers and caused price to move negatively over the course of the session. You'll also notice that this small red candle here is an inside bar to this bullish candle here. And then the next candle, this bearish candle, actually breaks down through the low of both the inside candle and the outside candle. So this inside candle setup is a classic bearish reversal formation. And for those of you who've been in the candlestick reading session, this is something that we use a lot. And for those of you who are familiar with candlestick reading, I'm sure you've heard of this. So this is a classic bearish reversal setup, which is indicative of a loss in momentum and a shift in sentiment. So at the point that price action is broken down below the low of this mother candle, we have a bearish reversal setup in play. So we can go ahead and enter our short position at the break of that candle low. And so what we've effectively done then is highlight the area where we're looking to trade the trend line. And we've waited to see how price reacts once it goes to that area. And we've identified a bearish reversal candlestick formation, which tells us that we can go ahead and enter our short position. OK, so that's what we do when we're looking for price action confirmation. As I say, it's a slightly more conservative, but more strategic approach. We are taking a bit more time and thinking a bit more and letting the market sort of tip its hand as to where it's going to go. Now, in terms of how we use a stop, again, we have two options. So if we're trading a touch of the trend line, if we're simply entering short on a bearish trend line or, or long on a bullish trend line. So if we're simply entering a trade as price touches the trend line, then our best bet is to put our stop behind the last touch of the trend line. OK, so for this bearish trend line, if we're entering short here, our stop needs to go above the last high that touched the trend line. OK, now, if we're using more strategic approach and waiting for price action confirmation, what we can actually do is go ahead and reduce our risk because where we're entering short here, we can simply go ahead and put our stop above the apex of that term. OK, so again, if this was a bullish trade and we were entering long, our stop would go below the low of the term we enter on. So we traded up, we've hit the trend line, we've reversed, we've created this reversal pattern. We're short on the break of the inside candle low and our stop goes above. So we've greatly reduced our risk there. We've got a much tighter stop. And the beauty of that is that we only need to see a much smaller reaction from the trend line in order to give us a, uh, a positive risk reward outcome. OK. So in terms of how we set targets based on trading trend lines, then once again, we have two options. You might be noticing a theme here. So if we're trading a touch of the trend line, then if we're simply placing our trade as the market tests the trend line with our stop behind the prior touch, then what we want to do is simply aim to bank a minimum of two times our risk. So we measure the distance between our entry and our stop, double it, and that becomes our target. OK, 
Alternatively, if we're using a price action confirmation approach, where our stop is behind the apex of the term, then once again, we're simply looking to um, bank a minimum of two times our risk. So we simply measure the distance once again from our entry to our stop, double it, and that becomes our minimum trade target. Now, again, because we're trading with the trend here, we can anticipate that there is a chance that the market is going to run more in our favor. So it really comes down to what sort of trader you are. If you're a shorter term trader, then looking to bank a minimum of two times your risk is a really solid method, which is going to help you achieve positive results in the long run. However, if you prefer a more sort of swing style trading approach and you're happy to stay in the market a bit longer, possibly sit through chop then what you can do is look to hold the trade longer. So once the market achieves two times your risk, you can simply move your stop to break even and then look to hold and see if the trend continues and you get a bigger trade outcome. So that's entirely down to your own discretion and depends on your own personal trading preferences. OK, so when it comes to looking to improve our trend line trading, one of the best ways to do this is using confluence. OK, and for those of you who have been in uh, any of my other sessions, you'll know that confluence is something I talk about a lot, and put a great deal of focus on. And it essentially refers to where we're identifying two or more technical elements occurring in the same place, giving us the same reading. OK, so. We can use confluence between technical elements such as trend lines, support and resistance, Fibonacci levels or technical indicators. And one technical indicator that works particularly well is the Bollinger Bands indicator. So you can see the indicator here. It's these green bands wrapped around price. And essentially, this gives us a 20 period moving average is the middle line. And then two standard deviations of that average to the top side is the upper band and two standard deviations to the downside of that average is the lower band. And essentially what this indicator does is highlight where volatility is overstretched in the market and highlights points at which the market is vulnerable to a reversal. So when price moves up into the upper Bollinger Band, suggesting there is a potential for price to reverse lower, and when price moves into the lower uh, Bollinger Bands, it's suggesting that price is vulnerable to a reversal higher. So in terms of how we can use this indicator with trend lines, we simply need to look for areas where the outer Bollinger Bands line up with trend lines, offering us confluence to trade. So if you look at what happens here, for example, we've identified our bullish trend line. Okay, We've connected these two price points. Price is trading up higher. We then seen price retrace lower and we're looking to see what happens as price trades into the trend line. And you can see that at the point that price tests the trend line, it's actually testing this lower Bollinger Band also. So what the indicator is telling us is that volatility is overstretched to the downside and there's the potential for a reversal higher. And we're all, this is occurring at the site of rising trend line support. So we've got confluence between these two technical indicators and it's precisely this confidence which encourages or strengthens our conviction in taking a bullish trade. So this is a really simple way in which you can look to improve your trend line trading. It's we're looking to identify confluence with other technical indicators. Now, another fantastic technical indicator that we can use is the Fibonacci tool, which simply measures moves in price and measures them on the ratios underlying the Fibonacci number sequence to highlight key levels which can act as turning points in the market if tested. So as price, as price is rising from the second touch, so once we've identified our trend line, connected these two price points, price has moved higher here, we've hit a new high, we're starting to retrace lower, we can go ahead and apply our retracement tool from that low to that high, and you can see that the tool automatically plots these key levels on the chart for us, and then it's simply a question of identifying where the confluence is between the rising trend line support and the horizontal Fibonacci support, and you can see that as the market comes down and tests the trend line, it does so at the 61.8% retracement level, which is a key Fibonacci retracement level. And so the confluence, again, of these two technical elements encourages our view that the market is going to rise again and strengthens our conviction for placing a bullish trade. So hopefully now you're starting to understand the process a bit more. It really is simple, very effective in terms of how we identify confluence between these different technical elements. So using trend lines as basic support and resistance then uh, is the first and most common way of trading trend lines. 
Now, a more advanced and slightly more strategic way to use trend lines is to look to trade trend line retests. And the premise behind this method of using trend lines to create trading opportunities is the same as the principle behind trading a retest of broken um, static support and resistance. OK, and that's the shifting order flow at these levels. So if we identify a bullish trend line as acting as support in the market where we have demand and then once price has broken that trend line, we know that there is more supply at that level than there was demand. And so when price retests the level, we can anticipate that it will now act as resistance and vice versa. Once a bearish trend line is broken, we know that supply has been overwhelmed and demand is now stronger. And so if price retests that broken bearish trend line, it's likely to switch and act as support instead of resistance. OK, so don't worry if you're struggling to follow that so far. We'll look at an example now and talk through it more clearly. OK, so in this image, you can see a perfect example of how this dynamic unfolds. So we've got this really solid bullish trend line in the market. You can see we've got several touches of it here. And this is telling us that buyers are strong in the market at this point. There's a lot of demand. It's keeping price supported each time it trades to it. However, at this point here, price breaks down through the trend line. And so we know at this point that sellers have overwhelmed buyers. There's now more supply in the market than there is demand. And so once price is moving below that trend line, there's a seismic shift in sentiment. And we can anticipate that if price trades back up to retest the underside of that trend line, it's going to act as resistance instead of support. And you can see that's exactly what happened. So we broke down through the trend line, almost like a slingshot, traded back up, retested it, and then boom, we move forward. So this is another classic dynamic which we see happening a lot of times with trend lines. So once we've established a really clear, well-respected trend line in the market, once that trend line is broken, you can then shift your perspective and monitor the trend line from the other side. So a broken bullish trend line like this, you can monitor to look for a sell trade where it acts as resistance and vice versa. If a broken bearish trend line is retested from above, it can act as support. Now, one way in which using this method can be particularly effective is in helping us enter trending markets. So the break of the trend line signals a change in trend. OK, so if we can identify breaks in short term trend lines, which are counter to the longer term trend, this can be a great way of entering into a bigger move. So if we zoom out a bit on this area, oops, I've actually skipped a slide there. OK, so essentially what we're looking to do is the zoom out on this chart should show you that what we're seeing with this price action is that the market was in a bearish trend. OK, so this movement here extended all the way up here. So the market had sold off it was in a big bearish trend. It was then correcting higher in the short term here. So at that point, we go ahead and put in our bullish trend line. And then once that trend line breaks, what that is essentially telling us is that the correction has run out of steam. So the counter trend move has broken down and that we're likely seeing a resumption of the longer term trend. OK, so do you, do you follow that? So if we're in a longer term bearish trend and we see a short term correction happening, we can run a bullish trend line. And then once that trend line breaks, that can act as the signal that the bearish trend, the longer term bearish trend is resuming. And that can be our entry signal and vice versa. If we're in a longer term bullish trend and we see the market starting to correct lower in the short term, we can run a bearish trend line. And then once that trend line breaks, we know that the correction has likely ended and the longer term trend is resuming. So this can be a really fantastic way of helping you enter into longer term moves in trending markets. Now, as we saw with um, using the trend lines in the traditional, most basic way, indicators can also help improve your chances of success with trading retests of broken trend lines. And one of the best indicators to use to confirm our trade idea are momentum indicators and trend direction indicators, which work particularly well. And the one which I find really helpful is the MACD indicator, the moving average convergence divergence indicator, which you can see here, which sounds like some sort of uh, some wild 80s invention. But it's actually a really fantastic technical indicator. So essentially, the indicator measures the difference between a short term and longer term moving average to identify whether the market is bullish or bearish. So you can see the indicator here, this histogram oscillating below the center line to indicate bearishness or above the center line to indicate bullishness. So look what happens then as price trades down through that trend line. So at the point that we break down through the bullish trend line, 
the indicator switches to the downside and gives us a negative reading. So at this point in time, the indicator is telling us that the market has gone bearish. Now look what happens as price retests that broken trend line. So as we trade back up and retest that broken trend line, the indicator is telling us that the market is still in a bearish trend. And so what we've got at this point is confluence between a retest of a broken bullish trend line, which now acts as resistance, and a negative uh, technical reading from the MACD indicator. So at the point that we establish confluence between these two technical elements, we know that we have a go ahead to go and enter our trade. OK, so we're using the trend line to identify a location to place our trade or a potential location to place our trade. And then we're using the MACD indicator to confirm that with the directional bias. So these are the two main ways then in which we can use trend lines. So looking to buy bullish trend lines as support and sell bearish trend lines as resistance. And then we can also look to trade retests for broken trend lines. So looking to sell a retest of a broken bullish trend line and buy a retest of a broken bearish trend line. Now, one further way in which we can use trend lines is to apply them not only to one side of price action, but to both sides to form channels. So with regular trend lines, we only apply a trend line on one side of the chart. But with channels, essentially what we're doing is doubling up on those trend lines and in a bullish scenario, we simply apply our rising trend line to both sides of the market to give us a bullish channel. And with a bearish trend line, we take it and clone it and apply it to the other side of the market to give us a bearish channel. Now, you won't always be able to find channels. OK, and the key point is that you don't draw the trend line on the other side of the market. You simply clone your existing trend line and apply it to the other side of the market. And if it adds up, if it links up with swing points, then you know you have a channel in play. So look here, for example. So we identify this bullish trend line by, this correct, um, by connecting this low to this low. OK, so let's say we've connected these two points and we're at this point in time here. The price is moving higher. We simply clone this trend line and move it to the top side of price, applying it to this swing point here. And then look what happens as price trades up. It tests that trend line, respects it and sells off, confirming our bullish channel. So as I say, you don't draw a fresh trend line on the other side of the market. It's very important that you just clone the existing trend line, apply it to the other side of the market and wait to see if it fits. And if it does, then you know you have your channel in play. So channels can be a really great tool for helping us to uh, visually identify the trend direction and also helping us with trade locations and trade management. So the ways in which we can use channels then are the basic ways in which we can to use um, bullish channel support as an area to buy, targeting a move up to the top side of the channel where we know that we're likely to see some profit taking and a reaction lower. Or alternatively, counter trend traders can use the top side of a bullish channel as a location to enter short term uh, short trades and vice versa. If we have a bearish channel, you can look to use bearish channel resistance as a trade entry point, targeting a move down to the bottom of the channel support. Or alternatively, counter trend traders can look to buy the bearish channel support targeting a short term uh, change lower. OK, so this is another really basic, simple yet effective way of trading channels, uh, trading the markets rather, is by cloning these two trend lines and identifying channels. You can see here we have a bearish version. So all we've done this time is connect these two uh, falling lows, these two swing points, clone that existing trend line and move it to the other side of price, connect it to the first swing low. And then you can see as price trades down, it's testing that channel low and it's respecting it clearly. So this is a really fantastic way to help improve your trend line trading. And it simply gives you more opportunities to trade on either side of the market and also gives you some locations to help with your trend uh, trade management. So if you're short from the top of the channel, you know that it's likely a good place to take profit into the bottom of the channel because this is where we tend to see support and some reaction higher. Now, again, as with trend lines, channels will often break. And though sometimes this can, of course, lead to losing trades, this dynamic can also create opportunities. So when a bullish channel breaks, typically it signals a reversal in the trend and the market moves into a bearish phase. And similarly, when a bearish channel breaks, it typically uh, signals a shift in trend and the market moves into a bullish trend. 
So if we zoom out on this particular channel then, and you can see that the market was running in a really strong bullish trend all the way up to this point here before we started to get this correction lower. Now, as the market's correcting lower, we can go ahead and draw in our channel. And then simply all we're looking to do is wait for the channel to break to signal a resumption of that long term trend. And for those of you who are in the chart formations, the chart patterns webinar, you'll know that we call this type of setup a bull flag. So this is the flag post and this is the flag itself. So the market is moving in a phase of expansion and momentum. There's then a contraction in momentum, a loss of direction. We get this correction lower against the longer term move. We identify our channel by cloning our two trend lines, and then we wait for the channel to break for price to uh, resume the longer term trend. And you can see at this point here, price has broken out above the channel top, and this um, signals the resumption of the trend. And so in terms of how you trade this then, you've got the option of either being more aggressive and simply trading the channel as it breaks, or again, you can wait for price to retest the broken channel top, which you can see here, and this offers a more conservative way of entering the trend. Now, one final way in which we can use channels then is to combine them with technical indicators and look to establish divergence between the indicator reading and the movement in price. So instead of looking to establish and looking for a technical indicator to confirm the moves we're seeing in price, such as we saw with confluence between the bearish MACD signal and the break in the trend line, this time we're looking to see the indicator suggesting that a particular move in price is likely to reverse. So if we pull up the RSI indicator then and look at this bearish channel and you can see what's happening, okay, as price is moving lower within this channel, putting in lower lows, the indicator two is moving lower and putting in a series of lower lows, confirming that bearish momentum is growing in the market and the selling pressure is getting stronger. However, look what happens at this point here. Although the price has put in a lower low, so the lowest point of this channel has been achieved, the indicator has actually started to reverse higher and is starting to put in higher lows. So once we see this happening, the indicator we know is telling us that the bearish move is running out of steam. So sellers are losing control, buying pressure is starting to build. And once we can identify this divergence, we know that we should be on the lookout for a bullish reversal. And of course, to confirm our bullish reversal, we need only see price break out above the channel top. And we can look to enter a breakout trade on the break of the trend line, or for the more conservative, more strategic traders, wait for price to trade back down and retest the broken trend line and then move higher. But again, this is a really simple, effective way of using these very basic technical elements in conjunction with one another to build solid trading ideas. So if we just quickly go back on that last slide, you can see we've got the longer term bullish trend. Price is correcting lower. We've identified our bearish channel. We've got our bearish channel in play. We look at the RSI indicator. The RSI indicator is flagging up bullish divergence. So we know then to be on the lookout for a bullish breakout and then price breaks out above that channel top, we get long, and then we capture the, the, uh, the rest of that bullish move. So this is a really simple yet effective way of using these technical elements. Okay, so that's the conclusion then for trend lines and channels. I hope you found all of that really useful and interesting. And as with a lot of these technical uh, aspects which we've been looking at in these sessions, it's always really uh, fascinating to go back over using some of these elements because it's very easy to forget sometimes just how effective uh, these technical elements can be. And trend lines and channels in particular are such a versatile tool and combine so well with other technical elements that they really can be a, a very fast way of improving your trading and helping you analyze the markets in a quicker way and helping you build solid trading ideas. So just before I go then, is there any questions I can answer for anyone before I wrap the recording up? Brilliant. OK, well, thank you all for your time today. And I'm glad that you are uh, that you followed along the session clearly and that you found it all useful. And I look forward to, uh, to catching up with you all next time. And in the meantime, good luck with your trend line trading. Thanks, everyone. Goodbye.